It's a perfectly rainy day here in Ireland. Today we're going to explore the oldest city in the entire island. It was established actually by Vikings who came and conquered the lands here that used to be known as Hibernia. At least before them, that was the name given by the Romans. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanus. Let me know where you're watching from. Today we're going to explore Waterford. Now, a lot of these streets actually follow the old urban design of the Vikings who came here in the 800s to the 900s. But of course, the Vikings didn't have cinema. <laughs> I just came out of here eating an amazing place called Momo. Highly recommend this restaurant. I'm going to start off with the food recommendation called Momo here. It's a new Irish restaurant. A lot of these kind of uh, gourmet Irish restaurants popping up all around the island. And I was absolutely blown away by the food. Great, great, great food. So let's walk around. Join me. So highly recommend Momo. So right now we are in County Waterford, in the city of Waterford, which is only about 30, 40 minutes away from Kilkenny, pretty damn, pretty close. And about two, two hours and 10, 15 minutes away from Dublin by train, probably the same via car. And it's one of the larger cities on the island with a population of 50,000 people, so it's twice as big as Kilkenny. But its greatest claim to fame is it being the oldest city in the island. Back in the 800s, the Vikings came over from the lands of Sweden and also Denmark. Actually, not Sweden, they came from Norway and Denmark. And they came and conquered these lands here in Ireland. Waterford was a great place because they can land their longshore uh, boats. And also they can navigate the rivers into the hinterlands and start invading the innocent Irish people and stealing all their goods and their wealth and bringing it back over here to Waterford as they make their own settlement. Let's walk around an area called the Viking Triangle, shall we? Let's go. Is everything open on the Sunday, Richard? No, this is a very, very sleepy town on a Sunday. Things are super, super quiet here. I was lucky to find a place to eat because there's not that many places to eat that are open today. So I'll show you the food that I had as I'm walking through, but I just got to find a crosswalk here. A lot of traffic. So I had this amazing, which is a type of fish from this area. with some mash and some like cauliflower sauce. Ooh, with some fresh roasted carrots and some broccoli and some mussels. It was so delicious. Uh, for starter, I had this pumpkin soup, which was really, really great. Just look at that. Oh.
Right now I'm at this restaurant called Momo here in Waterford in Ireland and I love this new type of dining culture that they have here. Everything is local and this is a pumpkin soup with some freshly baked bread, some interesting type of butter. I'm so excited to try this and I'm so excited to try this. Hey Phil! Wendy, you have bread! You're also eating fish. That's amazing. I wish I didn't need an umbrella, but I need to cover my camera. Hard to use an umbrella here in Ireland because of the winds. They're so high. Look how beautiful. The pumpkin uh, soup looked great. Yeah, it did. Rosemary says, I hope you have an umbrella. Did I bring my wellies with me? I have converses, which are perfect for the rain. <laughs> but actually, these are waterproof converses. So yeah, I'm nice and dry. Waterford has one of the best public realms in Ireland, in my opinion, says uh, Ryan. That's so cool, Ryan. Oh, interesting. That's great to hear. Oh, wow, the wind's picking up. Your converses are really keeping your feet dry, says Bella. Yes, they are. Uh, they are waterproof. Converses, in the past few years, have made different types of waterproof sneakers. I think this is among their best ones. They're comfortable and waterproof. And they look stylish. Ooh, okay, this, my umbrella ain't gonna last. Gotta buy a strong umbrella for Irish weather. Hey, Janice says, Waterford, yeah, my grandfather comes from here. Also oh, cool, Janice, yeah. One of the reasons I wanted to come here because I know that your family came here, was from here. Have you had a Sunday roast today? You know, Sunday roast, I don't think it's really a thing in Ireland. I think that's a, more of a UK thing. Right over there, we see one of the cathedrals. But we're going to make our way to the other cathedral. So that is, should be the Catholic cathedral right there in the distance. But we're going to the Protestant cathedral. Hey, hey, hey Wendy says, Mary Poppins, here you go. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Get a windproof umbrella, says Daryl. Yeah, that might be a good idea. Hey, Lorreen, Lorreen, you're waking up early for these live videos. I'm so glad. Pardon the tardiness. You know, uh, there's not that many places available for food. And I was, um, I'm here only for a day trip and there's not that many train options. So I have a limited time uh, and I managed to do two 360 videos that super urbanists are good. To learn a little bit of the general history of this area. Plus I had to grab a quick bite. <laughs> so all <of> that <laughs> made me 12 minutes late. Cynthia, thank you so much for the 50 stars. I appreciate you. The streets are empty, says Rosemary. Yeah, this city is weirdly empty. It's twice as bigger than Kilkenny. And I came here at 11 a.m. and now sold to be seen. Only the slow trickling of the water from an overflow drain is the only thing I heard in this town. And the roaring winds of the Atlantic. I'm not sure why it's so empty. Yeah, I have no idea. Susie says, buy a baseball cap and wear it under your hood. Why, why would I need that, Susie? <laughs> Janice says, you wouldn't need an umbrella in the pub. Touche. Hey, Dave. Nice to see you here. Dave in Maine, welcome. All right, this umbrella ain't gonna work. Luckily, it's not raining too heavy.
the Waterford accent is basically the same as the Newfoundland accent. Yes, uh, says, who is this? Says Veronica. Prairie routes for Waterford was directly to Newfoundland, Canada. Here's the fanciest Baddington club I've ever seen. Wendy says, what was this building? This is one of the churches, but it doesn't have a name on it in front. Let's see. Well, oh. oh, it's a church and it's open. You guys want to go in? Hey, Kay. Nice to see you here, Kay. Welcome. All right, let's walk inside. So this is one of the Franciscan churches, I think. There was one person in there. I'm not sure what these things are. Jasmine, thank you so much for the 250 stars. Vlad sent the super chat. Thank you so much, Vlad, for the super chat. Vlad, thank you so much for Romanian money, by the way. Thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate you. Love your vibe. I'm so glad you do, Vlad. Thank you. Christina says, what a ghost town, yeah. No one's here.
Remember the ghost. Bear with me. Remember the ghost from the Kilkenny Castle? Strongbow. The Anglo-Norman that conquered these lands, Viking descents via northern France through England up into here. Well, Strongbow, whose real name was Richard de Clare, the Earl of Pembroke, first had to come into Waterford. However, in order to conquer these lands more efficiently, he had to marry Aoife. McMorrow. Aoife McMorrow was the daughter of Dermot McMorrow. And he was the king of Leinster. Leinster was one of the four original provinces of Ireland. They are still recognized today. Leinster, Munster, Ulster, and um, the other one, I keep forgetting how to pronounce it, so do remind me how to pronounce the last one with the C. Dermot thought that he would be able to still control the kingdom of Leinster while having his daughter married off. But he shortly died there after the wedding. Well, who knows how he died? Maybe it was you know, purely coincidental. Or maybe Strongbow had something to do with it. But he ended up becoming the ruler of this area. This is kind of the coolest bench I've seen. They were married just a few blocks away. We're going to go to the site of their marriage. But this is the coolest bench I've seen. However, there's a little hint as to how their marriage went. Because right over here, you got to look down. You see, what do you see on his hands? What's, his on, what's on his hands? Hey, Lorraine, nice to see you here. He has a ball and chain. <laughs> Strong bow. I wish that now I had a, a cider with me. Strong bow cider that's made in the UK. All right, let's try a bench. With the bench to rule them all. The strong bow bench. Let's rate it. Let's sit on the throne, which is ironically Strongbow. Oh. Ooh, it's cold because of the rain. <laughs> Got wet jeans. They're all slippery now. But this is so comfy, actually. My, my feet dangle, which is not an experience I have a lot. Uh, being a very, very, very tall 5'2", I usually don't have my feet dangling like this. Being very, very tall 5'2", I just usually don't experience this. So yeah, I'm wearing dark jeans. <laughs> it is very cold to the touch. Woo! Cold to the touch. But it's, a, it's a kind of cool, actually. I like it. It's nice views, you know, of the medieval city. Right now we are what's called the Viking Triangle. The Viking Triangle is the oldest part of the city. And there used to be a wall that surrounded this area. We're just actually just outside the city. And I like this bench. No bird poo. No crow poo. It's just wet. <laughs> My feet are dangling, which is a nice uh, novel experience for me. So I would give this hmm, a very strong seven point nine. Seven point nine out of ten. A very strong score on strong bow. Right over here, the Earl of Pembroke, the man who conquered 
Ireland on behalf of the Anglo-Saxons, or the Anglo-Normans. <laughs> Let's keep on walking. I'm not sure what this is, but methinks this is a piece of the World Trade Center. I can't tell for sure. It might be something else. Oh, it's cold. I should have worn more layers. What was the name called uh, before it was called Waterford? It still has a um, Irish name, though that's very hard to pronounce. Very hard to pronounce. I don't know quite what's the Irish name. Hey, Maria, nice to see you here. Waterford is named not after water, but after a fjord. And the water part means something different. So right behind us, we have the Bishop's Palace. And this was the finest 18th century ecclesiastical palace in Ireland, built by the Church of Ireland, Bishop Charles Este. He was appointed bishop in 1740 and was an Oxford-educated classical scholar with the neoclassical architecture that was then in vogue. He commissioned the Anglo-German architect Richard Castle to design the palace. The castle had designed some of Ireland's finest houses, including Leinster House in Dublin, now the seat of Irish Parliament. The town wall, redundant as a defensive feature, and sorry for the wet camera. I keep, keep drawing my camera. Note to self, buy a very good umbrella here. There we go. The town wall, redundant as a defensive feature in the 18th century, was reduced to the height to create a terrace garden looking over the fashionable mall. This mall, completed in 1737, was eulogized by the historian Charles Smith in 1745, the year Este died. Here he is, the bishop, lived in this. And all of super urbanists will get a 360 VR tour of it. So stay tuned, super urbanists. Patreon.com slash urbanist. And yes, it was confirmed by a few viewers that this is a piece of the World Trade Center. Memorializing the people who died there. Probably had direct descendants here to Waterford. This is the front, front entrance of the palace. Cool museum. Highly recommend going in there. Let's walk through here. So someone earlier asked, is Waterford Crystal still made here? Yes, it is. Right over here is their kind of showroom experience. St I think it's open right now to the public. Um, and here they make all the fancy crystals that Waterford is famous for. The very first crystals made here were in 1783. And it has become since then one of the more famous cities for crystals, along with the likes of Venice's Murano, which... I explored about a month ago, a little bit more than a month ago. So let me see if I can cross the street and actually show you the crystal. Are you going to buy a piece, says Susie? Yes, Susie, I'm going to buy the finest of chandeliers because I'm moving into the Kilkenny Castle as the headquarters for Ireland. Uh, I decided to evade all the taxes <laughs> and move. Uh, urbanists to Ireland. So <laughs> we're getting a chandelier because you know I saved all that money in taxes. Here it is. Let's see if they have a showroom that we could walk into, maybe. No, it's closed right now. Yeah, it's closed right now, but let me show it to you from the outside. It's a little bit hard to see. It's 
audio a little bit loud? Sorry about that, everyone. Is this better? Okay. That may be better. For many centuries, the merchants of Waterford, who basically ruled the city because they were also all the city council, met right over here. And right next door, they had their theater. And this is the main theater for many years. It still is because they have the Theater Royale of the city of Waterford. Yeah, conquered, um, someone said uh, the Vikings didn't actually conquer Ireland. You're right, yeah, they didn't conquer the entire island. <laughs> they conquered just, uh, they established or settled a few cities. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think the, what you could call the first conquerors is really the Anglo-Normans. And then really the British Empire is what actually conquered the entire island. Back in the 1840s, a gentleman went over to France to study the French Revolution. Maybe he can find some inspiration to see how it can affect his native homeland of Ireland. Well, France gifted him a flag, the tricolor, green, white, and orange, symbolizing the union between Protestant and Catholic, between Unionists, or people who want to stay within the Dominion of the UK, and people who want to be completely independent. This was first flown here in the 1840s, but has been flowing here ever since. 365 days a year, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. The only Irish tricolor flag allowed to do so. In the 1930s, it became the official flag of Ireland. And here's the guy, Thomas Meagher. Thomas Meagher has a crazy story because then he was ousted from Ireland to go all the way to Tasmania in Australia. And as he went to Australia, he escaped it and went over to New York. In New York, he became a brigadier general <laughs> during the Civil War and led an infantry group of uh, Irish, new Irish Americans. So he, he lived, lived a crazy life. So right there we have a New York connection. Lorraine, thank you so much for the 300 stars. There were six Irish-born victims of uh, 9-11. Oh, that's sad. No, that's why they have the commemoration. Let me uh, clean my... Judah says, I love how you pronounce New York. New York. New York City. Always a New York connection, says B. Griffin. Oh, yeah. Always. Always a New York connection. Sorry for my mic. Let me know if my mic is too loud. All right, I think that'll be better. Seeing you walking 10 miles per hour, Irish slow mo is different from your usual lives. How do you find it, Phil? I find it good. Just been, been having a lot of food. <laughs> and it's rainy and it's damp. <laughs> so it's hard to, to really walk fast.
Sound now is out a little low. Oh no. It's rainy and damp, but is it warm? No, it's pretty chilly. I should have worn an extra layer underneath my jacket, or at least a scarf. Here's another statue of Thomas Francis Meager. Sound is good now, yeah, yeah. Nice vehicles, oh yes. The vehicles of Ireland. For 800 years, this tower was open to the public in some way or another. It was used as a place to mint coin, it was used as a prison, it was used as a public office building. It was also used as a tourist attraction. Up until last year, it was the first year that it closed and that was past 800 years, and sorry. I start cleaning my lens. And this is Reginald's Tower. It was built by the Anglo Normans on the same spot as the original Viking fortification that predated it, making it one of the older buildings in all of Ireland still standing, especially in the city. Of course, there are some Neolithic buildings that are much older, like Newgrange. David, am I going back to Kilkenny? Yep, I'm saying Kilkenny at least one more time. One more day. Then I'm, all, then I'm off. Off. To another place. To another realm. Here is the river shore. S-U-I-R. It's a bit muddy. Yeah, these are sandbanks actually over here. I'm actually surprised. See some sandbanks. Los días lluvioso te inspira a escribir más, dice Manny. A veces, sí, sí, a veces, Manny, sí. Me inspira a veces a escribir más. Yes, rainy days sometimes inspire me to write more. All right, I gotta find another crosswalk. Oh, okay, I gotta backtrack and now go all the way back here. Crossing the street in Ireland sometimes is a bit complicated. They don't have too many crosswalks. Similar to America. Hey, Gary, welcome. What in this town st stands out most to you, says uh, Mona? This, right here, this huge tower. Reminds me a lot of the Tower of Thessaloniki. What stood out to me actually was the food. I had some amazing food earlier. Hey, Gary. Gary says, this is pocket money Susan gives me each week for my life. There's be water on my desk for me. <laughs> oh my god, I tagged this so people could read it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gary, for your, for your valuable sacrifice. <laughs> Round of hearts to Gary for his valuable, valuable sacrifice. Only water for him the next few days. <laughs> Thank you so much for a five euro super chat. Five pound super chat. All right, now I gotta cross this street to get closer to the the Viking statue. Look how wet I am. Oh my god, I got so wet. <laughs> I 
Time to dry. Will you consider Kilkenny a suburban type of area? No, not suburban in the sense of uh, U.S. It's just a small town. You know, small town in the, co in the greater context because it traditionally is considered a city, but yeah. Here's Reginald Tower. As I mentioned, it was constructed in 1170. Following the fall of the city to the Anglo-Normans, two Viking leaders were executed, executed here. And then later on, it was when they got married. Um, Strongbow with Aoife, the daughter of McMorrow. Some people say that they got married here. Some people say they got married uh, at the modern-day Protestant Cathedral. And this is their door. Vikings were short people? Hello? Is anyone there? There, there, there. Hello, 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 hello. Okay. Let's walk away now. So here is Oak. This is where the Vikings had their original Oak Fort. Hey, no mades, hola querido Ariel. Hey, no mades, bienvenidos al lluvioso. Waterford. This means trying to say Waterford in the Spanish accent. Right here is a recreation of a Viking longboat. You know, if it rains even more, if it keeps on raining, I might need this to get back to Kilkenny. This was built by a team of carpenters in the past few decades, but it's built too precise specs of the original Viking boats. Okay, now let me take out my umbrella again. All right, I'm going to take this back to Kilkenny because uh, it's raining way too much. So right over here, <laughs> you know, uh, these Vikings, they got on this boat. They had to cross from Scandinavia. Let me know if anyone's been to Scandinavia. We have a, a few Scandinavian urbanists out there. It's cold up there. It's cold. Imagine going up through that sea all the way to here to Ireland. And you know how close they were to the water? Only about this close. The water was about here, the water level. And you know you're sitting over here. That is, that is tight. So artistic how you clean the camera, says Judith. Oh, I'm glad you like the artistry behind the camera cleaning. Ariel, you're soaked through your pants. I am. Susie, oh. Ugh, right. And no bathroom, says Ronald. Yep, the sea was your bathroom. I'm not sure how they dispose of excretion. That's actually a very good point, Ronald. It's raining a lot, oh yeah. We found the Abbey. 1240, the Franciscans came over here and set up an Abbey. Then 
about 200 years later, they built this gigantic tower. Here we have a sculpture made out of a gigantic tree trunk. Here there's a gigantic sculpture made out of a gigantic tree trunk done in that kind of original Viking style. And this depicts the entire Viking invasions of various parts of Ireland. Thomas says, wow, so happy I found your stream. Love it. I live in the U.S. but have several friends that live in or near Dublin. Yes. Thank you so much. Everyone, slam that like button right now on YT or if you're on FB, share this video with all your friends and family or any, any awesome Facebook groups. Share with them. And on YT, slam that like button right now. And let's get these videos out to more people around the world. As the missionaries back then spread Christianity, let's spread the word of urbanists. So, do the pious thing. And slam that like button. Let me know if you're on Team Like. I'm the only one in the city, luckily. You know, they cleared out the city just for me, which is nice. And like, Ariel's coming. Let me let's make sure that he has peace and quiet to do his live stream. And, you know, they evacuated the entire city. <laughs> so apparently the story begins with a gigantic comet hitting Earth. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. And there's some mushrooms here. You eat these, ooh, oh, you'll be seeing the entire history come alive if you eat these some mushrooms. The entire history, boom, vivid detail. Suddenly the streets will no longer be empty if you eat those mushrooms. And here's a guy sticking out of the wall. Susie says, Ariel, there's 309 of us with you. Oh, thank you so much, everyone. Tune in. Slam that like button. Let's get this to 500. Here's the Abbey. Nothing like seeing a cool ruined Abbey in the rain. It's kind of pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> It is awesome. Let's uh, let's get let's go through. Shall we? Hey! Oh my God! There are people. King of the Vikings. This is like a 360 video look. What happened to rainy Ireland? I was so, I was so uh, happy that Ireland every day was pure sunny. It was sunny, hot weather. I was wearing my sunglasses, drinking Aperol spritz. Here is Luke Wadding. Luke Wadding. This man was the first Irishman to be a candidate for Pope. I don't think any other Irishman has been a candidate for Pope since. He was alive from 1588 to 1657. He was also responsible for putting a little saint that was not so well known 
into the pantheon, so to speak, of saints that was written in that time, in the 1600s. That saint, who is it? Let me know in the comments. It is a very, very famous saint now, but at that time, he was barely known by anyone. But it was thanks to Luke Wadding that ended up making thousands upon thousands of New Yorkers get drunk every March. Thanks to this guy. B. Griffin, you are right. That is St. Patrick. Oh, this is a cool photo opportunity. Right here. Is this County Kerry? No, Thomas, we are right now in County Waterford. In the city of Waterford. I would go down there, but it is flooded. The weather is sure different from Italy. Yeah, it is. It is very different from Italy. Here's the Museum of Time. Oh, it's kind of cool. The Museum of Time. I'm going to see if I can film in here. Let's see. Because I already have my ticket. Is it closed? Yeah, it's closed. Wow, things closed. They're here early in Ireland. Yeah, it's closed. Wow. Things closed here so early because this was open a little bit earlier. Beautiful red door, yeah. Beautiful red door. Yeah, so uh, pro tip, if you come here to uh, Waterford, there's a 15 euro ticket that covers three museums. No, it's four museums and a tour. Um, Museum of Time is one of them. There's a the medieval museum and there's the palace of the bishop and there's one more, the silver museum right over here. And then it also covers the, the, the tour for the Vikings. So here, basically all the museums here are right next to each other. There's the civil, silver museum. Here's the Protestant Cathedral of Waterford. And this is the medieval museum. Or suburbanists are also getting a 360 look into this museum. Stay tuned. Hey, Chris, nice to see you here. Maria, it's 5 p.m. Yeah, it is. Yeah, museum's closed pretty early. This dates back all the way to the 1400s. This house right over here. Apparently, they, the county is going to make the Museum of Death. Literally. They're going to make the Museum of Death right here in this old townhome. Now, this townhome was a almshouse for quite a while for destitute men that had no other way of getting around. They came over here and ended up... Uh, being taken care of. And then it became an elderly hospital. Until it recently will become the Museum of Death. So stay tuned. I wish it was open right now, but it's apparently opening next year. More Vikings, please. Yeah. Let's see if we can find any more Vikings.
Hey, Thomas says, thank you. This is fantastic. I'm so glad you're enjoying it, Thomas. Thank you. This feels like the beginning of a horror film. A man doing a live video. It rains so hard, starts thundering and storming, that he gets invited into a random retirement home. In this retirement home, he meets some strange character. But then their stories don't quite align with the time that this live streamer is in. It's almost like they were of a different time. Not because they're elderly, but because what they're saying is a few hundred years removed. Events that they're recounting don't seem to be aligned with the history textbooks. As the man steps outside, this live streamer on a rainy night, confused, he finds out that he's in a different place. Cue the music and the title credits. Take that boat and go on the Viking, Viking River cruise, says Paul. I wish. <laughs> Ariel, you do a great job in any weather. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that, um, Paul or Kathy. I'm intrigued by the Museum of Death, says Susie. That's awesome. I can't wait to see it. Ancient and modern architecture go great together. A retirement home for Vikings, says George. Come to Sweden. Whoa, cars. There are no people here but cars. Is this the Twilight Zone? Or is this America? <laughs> because America, you know, no one actually walks around <laughs> most cities. There's no such thing as bad weather. The only thing that's wrong is what you wear, says Hyde. That's the, what the Denmark ex-Vikings believe. This is the site of the castle where King John resided whilst in Waterford. MDN says, neat time twist or alternate version of history, or alternate dimension story plotline. Yeah, yeah, there's, it's, it's, it's quite a, its own subgenre. Check out on, uh, a great show called The Man in the High Castle. All right, let's walk around for a little bit more. I gotta get, I gotta get back to my train station. I gotta catch my train at 6 p.m. So let me know if you want. We saw all the, like a lot of the historical places so far. There's, there's the other cathedral that's a little bit farther away. MK, do I release my 360 videos? Eventually. I do. Not all of them, though. But some of them are indeed released. But if you want full access to the entire archive, you have to become a super urbanist. Especially the longer museum videos, I usually don't release them publicly. But all says, this is how I envision your trip before I came over to New York. Uh, bef uh, before I came. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you're right. What is this? Is this what I think it is? In this medieval town? Have we run into a mall? Cue the dramatic music. I gotta put on my mask though, so I can walk to the other side of the street. Are we going in? Yes, Judith, we are. We're venturing inside a Waterford Mall. What secrets we will find? Who knows? Stay tuned on Urbanist. Let's go. On 
is a legit mole. It's an original Viking mall. Yeah, the Vikings enjoyed shopping. That's right, uh, Peter. You hit the nail on the head. Is there a Cinnabon? Great question. There's a Starbucks. That I do know. I don't think there's a Cinnabon. Oh, I'll show you. Okay, yep. I just got my alarm to say go back. Forgotten structures back from the 1900s to the 2000s. A different time in humanity. People like to hang out in these places called the shopping mall. It would be filled with a variety of different stores, such as a record shop where rather than downloading it directly from your brain, you would actually have a physical object that you would be in the form of a disc that you would insert into a machine and listen to sounds coming out of it. You will also have something called dishware. Dishware was also a physical object that you used to actually consume food rather than it being delivered directly by pills, as it is now in the 12200s. I gotta venture back out. So, <laughs> ironically, they actually did find old Viking remains here. This uh, shopping center was uh, redeveloped in uh, 2016. However, they end up finding below nine meters or nine feet in the finding a settlement of the Vikings from the 10th and 11th century. They found the earliest evidence of post walls and wicker and straw floors from the early houses of Waterford. Kathy says, good, you're dressed for rain. This is your first uh, wet day in Ireland, not doing too bad. Yeah, yeah, I'm surviving. I'm still alive. It's nice. Mm. Wendy says coffee. You know, Wendy, I already had three Americanos <laughs> today, so I'm at my coffee limit. Get a steak and kidney pie and chips. Indeed. <laughs> and eat it on the train, so selling. <laughs> Indeed, Helen. Ireland feels so close to you. Yeah. I'm so glad. Uh, says Cynthia. I'm so glad it feels close to you. That's awesome. Uh, 
All right, as I make my way to the train, who wants to see one more last stop? Uh, it is a really cool kind of secret area filled with cool street art. We see some street art here, but there's even more. Let me know if you want to see one more stop. And have you had a fish supper? I did earlier. Yeah, I had, a, had an amazing hake. Uh, really, really good at a place called Restaurant Momo. George says coffee shop stop. No, I already had three Americanos. I am caffeinated to the brim. Seattle native says Alan, I love the rain. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Kay says uh, to Lorene that dinner is a surprise. Oh, I wonder what Kay is brewing. Hey, Maria, thank you so much for the $10 Super chat, I appreciate you. Lorraine says, yes, please, one more stop, or two, or three, or four, five, six, seven, eight. Just keep on going for a few hours, please. Sure. <laughs> have I had fish and chips, says Eyeball. I have. I have had fish and chips. I had uh, amazing fish and chips in Kilkenny, uh, which is, I did not cover it at all. Hey. Yes, I am vlogging, yeah. Can I, can I say hello? <laughs> yes, you can. How's it going? <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> I'm vlogging. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, hey, Maria says, uh, can't wait to go <laughs> Israel next year. B. Griffin says, I'm not against seeing Waterford at 3 a.m. I'm glad. People are so warm and friendly, says Audrey. Yes, Audrey, 100%. Very warm and friendly city, by, uh, or a country. The culture, people, easy to make conversation with. You know, if you're proficient in English, you'll, you make conversation pretty easily. Um, people are so kind of warm. And the warmness feels a bit more... Um, warmer than you would encounter in America, which is really good. Walter says France next. <laughs> CB says funny girls. <laughs> and both, uh, both the genders are very, very uh, friendly. You know, some countries it might be one gender or the other, but yeah, both genders here are very friendly. Have you done any shopping, says Sunshine? I did, I got myself a book. I got myself a postcard. And uh, yeah, that's what, <laughs> that's what I shopped for. All I got was a book and a postcard. Cool looking bar, oh my God, look at that. JK Walsh. That was awesome. Kathy says PR next. Sunny and warm. Sunny and rainy and warm, yeah, because it's always raining in Puerto Rico too. But it's also sunny all the time. Kathy says uh, new cardigan? I might need one, uh, judging by how cool it is today. And soon I'll be venturing beyond the wall. So, who wants a cool secret? Did you get, didn't you get a Guinness glass? I did, Lucy. Yeah, I got a Guinness glass and Guinness socks. So, here's the secret. Right here. It's uh, street art. So, we are going to a little niche. Right. right here, filled with street art. But 
wait, there's more. Andy Warhol right here, I think. Should be Andy Warhol. This, I think, might be a paying homage to Van Gogh. This is all made by Kevin Bo Bowen Art. Kevin Bowen Art. Part of Waterford Walls project. And there's a lot here in the <laughs> in the back alley of the restaurants. Here's a very regal dog, you know, a dog that was the star of Hamlet. He's a golden retriever in history who did one of the finest performances written by the bard. And right over here, we see the old walls. Also, it's kind of hidden in a car park. <laughs> That's how you find interesting things here in, in Ireland, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I usually would not recommend this in the United States of America. The United States of America, I would say, don't go to a parking lot. You'll be wasting your time. But in Ireland, and weirdly enough, go to the parking lots, which are known as car parks here in this country, and uh, you'll find really old architecture. <laughs> <laughs> such as ancient walls. Hey, Susie says, we're, we're about to serve dinner here with John and Doris. We can plate some up for you, says Susie. Just give me, give me a few hours to get to Scotland by ferry. And sure thing. So the old ancient walls. Let me zoom in, actually. You can see it. So pro tip, go to the car parks. You'll find interesting things like these. Uh, watch my video from yesterday. It's a short video on TikTok and slash Facebook where I found a weird kind of occult sculpture in another car park in Kilkenny. Here you can learn more about Waterford Walls. Hmm. <laughs> and Mildred says, that's why I like when uh, parking my car, yeah. Thomas says, ooh la la, I love this Irish town. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. There's a lot of stuff to see here. Kilkenny has a little bit more kind of attractions, but Waterford, I think, makes a good day trip from Kilkenny. Or if you're coming in from Dublin, I think it might make a good day trip. Old neoclassical architecture right over here. Hey, Evelyn says, Me encantan las tiendas en Irlanda. Son muy bonitas. Uh, ¿Coleccionas algunas cosas en los viajes que haces? Sí, yo colecciono las bolsas de tote. No sé cómo se dice en español, pero las bolsas esas uh, que son pequeñitas. Y también colecciono, a veces colecciono um, arte. En prints, en uh, papel. ¿Qué son las cartas? It's annoying. Are we eating anything lemon? No, we're not. No, not today. Not sure why we're waiting to cross. Right. 
Darby, thank you so much for 490 stars. I appreciate you. Ireland has its pride in its buildings and businesses. Looking so smart and inviting, says Phil. Yeah, indeed. So, um, well, to translate, I usually collect tote bags and art prints and postcards. Oh my God, this is a cool bench <laughs> with a built-in umbrella, but still wet. <laughs> Look at that. Bench arts, ladies and gentlemen. Thomas uh, recommends Temple Bar. Yeah, Thomas, uh, I did feature Temple Bar before. Uh, so check out my, uh, I think it's my first video walking in Ireland. So it should be the second video in Ireland. All right, let's test on this wet bench. Oh, nice. The umbrella does work. It does work. And I like this. It's a cool bench. It's designed like those good Central Park benches. Mm, it's perfect. Perfect backside um, slope to it. Perfect, nice concave for my buttocks. Uh, and um, I like the views surrounded by these neoclassical buildings. And it's an orange bench, yeah. It's nearly urbanist orange, not quite the orange I use, but nearly urbanist orange. Can I, can I take this bench home? Uh, Waterford, I, I hope you don't mind me. To the Office of Public Works here in Ireland, can, can I take this home? Um, this is a nice bench. I want, I want to have this in my, in my backyard. <laughs> this is an awesome bench. I like it. And it's also in a nice quiet street. It's closed off to car traffic. So I would give this bench a... Hmm... Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah, it's feeling. An 8.4. This is an 8.4 out of 10 bench. One of the better benches I've tried here in Ireland. I think this is the highest score yet. 8.4 for this artsy bench. B. Griffin says 9.8, no, <laughs> B. Griffin, to, to reach those high numbers, you uh, refer to my video in Capri, yeah, and to Santorini. Those, those are, those are top, top quality benches. Wow, there we go. That's Ireland for you, everyone. We've explored Waterford. I hope you enjoyed it. Dublin versus Waterford. Dublin is a lot more vibrant. Waterford is very empty. Uh, I'm not sure if it's only because it's a Sunday, but it's very, very empty. It's very quiet. Uh, I came here at 11 a.m. It wasn't raining. It was pretty sunny. Still empty. Almost no one around. I'm not sure why. Kilkenny is more full. Let me know why, because Kilkenny has half the population of Waterford and it feels way more filled with, with people. So everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to get access to two 360 videos of the museums here, you can become a super urbanist. Press that join button on YT, that become a supporter button on FB, or patreon.com slash urbanist. Patreon.com slash urbanist. Or you can leave a PayPal, paypal.me slash Ariel Vieira. That's my name paypal.me slash Ariel Vera for an individual contribution. We had a few new um, super a mega urbanists actually tune in for a postcard. Uh, so big welcome to Larry and Patricia for becoming mega urbanists and also Chris for becoming a mega urbanist. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Let me, uh, there we go, patreon.com slash urbanist. Everyone, I'll be back in some other part of Ireland next Wednesday. I'll see you next Wednesday on live video again at 4 p.m. 
Ireland time, 11 a.m. New York City time. Now I gotta run to my train. Have a great day, everyone. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Bye bye, Slango Bye bye.